I was uh, doing my PhD back in England at Oxford and my PhD advisor uh, is, a, is a colleague of uh, Dr. Baran Lee, uh, who was head of this department. And so when the uh, job offer came up here for a postdoc, I, she suggested I apply and I got it and here I am. I study these objects called neutron stars, which are one possible um, outcome of a supernova explosion. And if it isn't too massive, it'll end up as a neutron star. And these are very exotic objects. They contain about one and a half times the mass of our sun, squashed into uh, an object only 10 miles roughly across. Uh, they feature all four fundamental forces of nature uh, in their extremes. So gravity, electromagnetism, the weak and strong, nuclear forces. From that point of view, they're very interesting from the theoretical physics standpoint. They, they provide a laboratory to test our fundamental theories of all these forces in uh, a regime that is impossible to reproduce in the laboratory. The first observational evidence we had of neutron stars uh, was through these objects called pulsars, very regular periodic beams of radio waves that uh, flash on and off. Their magnetic poles are not aligned with their spin axis, so the radio beam is sweeping around kind of like a lighthouse. You need the best nuclear theory available to, to be able to model these systems uh, and to be able to for example, in the theory of nuclear energy to develop more and more efficient ways of harnessing nuclear energy, whether it be fission as the standard nuclear reactors are, or hopefully sometime in the future nuclear fusion, essentially harnessing the, powers, the power of stars uh, for our own benefit. Fusion is the type, of, the type of nuclear reactions that occur inside our sun, inside of every star, so th there are some practical applications, specifically nuclear energy research and what is known as nuclear stockpile stewardship, so the managing of uh, nuclear weapons.